For tapes, CDs, DVDs, or our publication, Voices from His Excellent Glory, Declaring the Kingdom, write P.O. Box 21516, Hot Springs, Arkansas, zip 71903. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Thank you. Friday morning, December the 26th, 1986. Midwinter Family Camp Meeting being held at Lake Hamilton Bible Campgrounds, Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas. Tommy Cook of Tulsa, Oklahoma, is the speaker of the morning. Well, praise the Lord. Brother Tommy Cook is going to minister the Word this morning from the, from the Word. And then I imagine that the Word of the Lord will also flow through him in a living Word to some of those... Uh, whoever the Lord directs him this morning. And we're just glad for that ministry that the Lord has given him that, that flows out into the, to the household of faith. So let's stand then. Father, we thank you this morning yes, for Lord. your presence. We thank you for your anointings. We yes, thank you Lord. for the power of the Holy Spirit to flow and move. But most of all, we thank you for Jesus. Yes, Lord. Now, Father, we impart the power of the living God by the, the anointing of the Amen. Holy Spirit to flow through Brother Tommy today. Thank you, Lord. He ministers the word of the Lord yes, Lord. unto your people. We thank you for breaking and, and opening oh, the scriptures yes. unto him that yes, he may Lord. open them unto us. Yes, Lord. We praise you for it as your anointing flows through him yes, today Lord in God. the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen and amen. Amen. Let's just praise him. Can we do it? Hallelujah. Praise his name. Wonderful God, we worship you this morning, Lord. Praise your wonderful name. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord God. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. We worship and praise you today, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. 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 You can be seated. Praise the Lord. It's good to be inspired by God, but how many know we need also information by the Lord? Praise the Lord. We want to share some things with you today that God's put on our heart. Let's turn today to the book of Colossians, chapter 1, and uh, we want to share some today on the firstborn. Colossians, chapter 1. It's good to be back at Lake Hamilton. Anybody have any warfare before you got here? <laughs> Amen. You're in the right place then. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 15, the Scripture says, speaking of Jesus, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. Then we look at verse 18. And he, Jesus, is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he, that's Jesus, might have the preeminence. Jesus is the preeminent one. Can you say amen? amen. And Jesus will always be the preeminent one. Can you say amen? amen. <laughs> he is the head. Hallelujah. Now turn to Romans chapter 8. We want to teach this morning by the help of the Lord. Romans chapter 8, verse 29, this beautiful passage of Scripture. For whom he did foreknow, that's his foreknowledge, he, did also, he also did predestinate <coughs> to be conformed to the image or the likeness of his Son, that he, Jesus, might be the firstborn among somebody. Among the Methodists? No. Among the Baptists? No. Among the Pentecostals? No. But among many brethren. Among many brethren. Now turn back. Keep your place. Turn to Hebrews 2. Hebrews chapter 2. And let's see what the Scripture says here, brethren, to us. Hebrews 2.10. Let's see who the brethren are. Hebrews 2.10. It says, For it became him for whom are 
all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons to glory. The word bringing means leading them. They're, they're led. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, come on, they are the sons of God. How I many know we're all growing up in Him if we're moving up in God? And so he said, he's bringing these sons to glory. Christ in you is the seal of hope of glory. To make the captain of their salvation perfect through something. Sufferings. For both he that sanctifies and they who are sanctified are all of one. For which cause he's not ashamed to call them somebody. Who? He's the firstborn among what? Many brethren. Praise the Lord. Among many brethren. Verse 17, Wherefore, in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren. So he is the firstborn among many brethren. Now turn to Matthew. Let's see who the brethren are. Matthew 12. Matthew 12. <clears throat> of course, I believe they're sons, but in Matthew 12, look in verse 46. It said, While he yet talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brethren stood without, desiring to speak with him. Then one said to him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without, desiring to speak with thee. But he answered and said unto him that told him, Who is my mother? Who are my brethren? And he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren are my brothers. And whosoever shall do the will of my Father, which is in heaven, the same as my brother, my sister, and my mother. Hallelujah. His brethren, his brothers, are those who will hear and know the will of God, and they will do it. Amen? Hallelujah. Jesus said, Why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things I say? We are to be doers of the will of God, the Word of God. Amen? So his brethren are those who do the will of God. Now, let's go a little further in this. Turn with me to Exodus chapter 13. Let's see what the Lord says here uh, in the Old Testament. Exodus 13. <clears throat> and just look at verse uh, 12. Verse 12, that thou shalt set apart unto the Lord all that opens the matrix, every firstling that comes of beast which thou hast, the male shall be the Lord's, and every firstling of an ass thou shalt redeem with a lamb, if thou wilt not redeem it, then thou shalt break his neck. And all the firstborn of man among my children shall thou redeem. How many know it says? In Revelation 14, that those people, the 144,000, are redeemed from the earth and from among men. They are the redeemed of the Lord. And God said here <clears throat> to us that these are redeemed. Now, look in verse 15. And it shall come to pass, when Pharaoh would hardly let us go, that the Lord slew all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both the firstborn of man and a beast, firstborn of beast. Therefore I sacrifice to the Lord all that opens the matrix, being males, but all, God said, the firstborn of my children, the Lord said, I redeem. I redeem. Are you glad you're redeemed today by the blood of the Lamb? Amen. Hallelujah. He has redeemed us. Praise His holy name. So, God said, they are mine, and I Redeem them. Now, turn back to chapter 13 there in verse 1 and 2. We'll see that in the firstborn, there is the work of sanctification. And we know that we must be sanctified and continually sanctified or made holy, set apart. And the Lord spake to Moses, saying, Sanctify. Sanctify. That word means to be set apart. Again, to consecrate, to make clean, or to pronounce clean. I believe He wants a clean people, don't you, brethren? I believe He wants us clean in our hearts, in our minds, in our bodies. I mean, all oh, that God is bringing forth much deliverance in His church to those that submit to Him. 
And that's the purpose of deliverance, that we get out of us those things in us that we don't need that's not like Him. Amen? Hallelujah. And I don't believe we can be a son. I don't believe we can be among those uh, people without being delivered and cleansed, hallelujah, by His blood. Can you say amen? amen. The Lord spake to Moses, saying, Sanctify to me all the firstborn, whatsoever that opens the womb among the children of Israel, both of man and of beast. God said, It is mine. It belongs to me. And notice, he said, Set them, uh, sanctify unto me that firstborn. Set them apart for me. They are made clean for me. They are purified. How many know that he has a, a church, a bride he's bringing forth? How many know that Paul said there in the Second Corinthians, uh, he called it a chaste virgin. Amen? One that has not been touched. And the word ch chaste to me speaks of purity. It speaks of uh, power. And it speaks of perfection. God is going to purify people. God is going to put his power in a purified people. And God is going to perfect a people. Hallelujah. Amen? He's not going to do it unless we submit to Him. And cry out for it. And desire it. Is He? No. Now, let's show you that we can lose this uh, birthright. Turn with me first to Genesis 49. We were here in Thanksgiving. We taught a message on entering the twelve gates, although we didn't go too heavy into it. But in chapter 49, we know that the first son was Reuben. Reuben means to behold a son. And the first thing that happens to us when we're born again, we behold the son, the Lord Jesus. Isn't that right? There's a translation. There is a transition. There's a change within us. Now, in chapter 49, God said uh, here in verse 3, Reuben, thou art my firstborn. Reuben, thou art my firstborn. Now notice, four things here that Jacob said. And I believe this potential is in you and me, uh, in that seed that's in us, that Christ has put in us. And notice it. He said, my might, the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity, and the excellency of power. Hallelujah. Now, he said also, Reuben... You're unstable as water. And how many know as newborn Christians, we are unstable as water? And sometimes as we begin to grow a little, I think we're still <laughs> unstable as water. And notice what he said, though. I want to show you, you can lose the birthright. This man lost the birthright. Now, the birthright speaks of the blessing. It speaks of... Uh, it spoke of rulership. It spoke of priesthood. It spoke of a prophetic uh, uh, ministry. It speaks uh, of the double portion ministry. It speaks of inheritance. It speaks of the rights and the privileges that was given to him in a family. But he lost it, this man right here. I mean, oh, we can lose the things of God. I said we can lose. We can be a loser. But I don't want to be a loser. I want to be a winner. Hallelujah. Amen. But he said here, thou shalt not excel. And one of the meanings to excel is virtue in the New Testament. And if we excel as a sinner, how much should we excel as a Christian? But how much more should we excel as an overcomer in Christ? Amen? And he said, Thou shalt not excel, because thou went up to thy father's bed and defiled it, and he went up to my couch. So because of uncleanness, he lost the blessing. I mean, oh, God has not called us to uncleanness, but unto what? Come on. Holiness. Now turn to Chronicles, First Chronicles 5. Oh, Jesus. First Chronicles, chapter 5. And I want to show you that Reuben lost the birthright. First Chronicles 5, verse 1. <clears throat> now the sons of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, for he was the firstborn. But for as much as he defiled his father's bed, he defiled his father's bed, his birthright was given 
to the sons of Joseph, the son of Israel, and the genealogy. Now, there's a lot in this that I'm not going into. And the genealogy is not to be reckoned after the birthright. Verse 2. For Judah prevailed above his brethren, and of him came the chief ruler, but the birthright. Come on. Was what? Joseph's. Was Joseph's. Amen? Now, I need to take you and balance that with another scripture in the Psalms, in Psalm 78. But, um, but I'll leave it right there. So he lost the birthright. Now, we can, we, we, Esau lost the birthright because we would say a bowl of beans. Now, turn to Hebrews 12 a minute. Let's look at the scripture concerning Esau just a second here. And look in verse 14. Now, if, if, notice what Paul said in Hebrews. And I, I believe that he might have wrote, he, he wrote Hebrews. It's just my conviction. Verse 14 of chapter 12. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. How many want to see the Lord? Jesus Christ Lord. And he said, if you're going to see the Lord, it must be with holiness. Amen. Hallelujah. The pure in heart shall... See God, when He shall appear, we're going to be like Him, for we're going to what? See Him as He is. But without holiness, no man shall see Him in that Lordship realm. Next verse. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root... How many know the tree is known by the root? Lest any root... A bitterness spring up, trouble you, and many shall be defiled. Bitterness will kill you. It will destroy you. It will cause you to lose the blessing of God. How many know that we need intercessors today? But you know, you can't be an intercessor, and you really can't really seek God and keep that bitterness in your heart. Because He's going to put His finger on it. Isn't that right? Hallelujah. Now, notice... Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For you know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. He lost the blessings. He sold out to the flesh. He was called a fornicator. Fornicators are not all those who get in bed with other women. Fornicators are fleshly people. Hello? He was called a fornicator because he sold out to the flesh. He sold his birthright. He sold the blessing because of the flesh. Now, look in that same chapter. Look in verse 23, what Paul tells us. <clears throat> well, 22. You're come to Mount Zion, unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels, and to something, the general assembly. I mean, no, that's the mass meeting. Huh? I call that the general church. The general assembly and something else. The church of the firstborn, but it's firstborn once. I mean, there's a portion of the firstborn in us. Amen? Which are written where? In heaven. Hallelujah. And I believe the firstborn ones are heavenly people. Amen? They're walking the earth, but their heart and mind is on the Lord. Amen? I mean, oh, look, turn back a minute to uh, John 3. John 3. In verse 11, I believe the double portion ministry that's coming into people as we grow up in Him is going to be not only the Word and the Spirit in a people, not only are we going to have more to give out to others, but I believe it represents a minister on that side of the veil and this side of the veil. 
Jesus said, all power was given unto him in what? Heaven and earth. And he's giving, he's pouring that power into a people that he can trust that he's raising up. And here in John 3, verily, verily, he said, I say to thee, we speak that uh, we do know and testify that which we've seen. And he said, you receive not our witness. Verse 12, if I have told you earthly things. And you believe me not. How shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven. Now look at this. Even the Son of Man which is in heaven. Let's read it this way. Verse 13. No man hath ascended up into the spirit realm, but he that came down from the spirit realm, even the Son of Man which is in the spirit realm. His feet was right on the earth. Amen? Turn to John 14 a minute. Oh, hallelujah. How many love God's Word? Hallelujah. The Word of God. John 14. Let not your heart be troubled. How many know we can allow it to be agitated? We can allow ourselves to be full of anxiety. But he said, let, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, household, are many dwelling places. Isn't that right? Many rooms, many abodes. That's in you and me. If, we, if it were not so, I would have told you. I mean, old Jesus was the first house. And yet he's raising up a house in a corporate house, Right? Ezekiel said, show the house to the house. We need to see Jesus today. We need to see the first house. Who was the pattern, the example. And he said, I go to prepare a place huh, for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'm going to come again and receive you unto myself. And where I am, where I am, there you may be. Also, now we know he's coming again out there, but how many know he's coming in here? Huh? Amen. And how many know that John 14 and 15 and 16 is talking about the coming of the Lord in you and me? In the power of the Holy Spirit. Come on. In you and in me. But most people are looking for it out there. But brethren began to know that he must come in us first. He will come suddenly to his temple. Hallelujah. And notice the scripture says here in verse, let's see where, where he was. Let's see. He said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. Let's look in verse uh, uh, 11. Believe me that I am in the Father. Now he said, where I am, there you can be also. Where was he? He was in the Father. Who's the Father? God the Father is a spirit. God the Father is love. He's life. He's life. And He's a consuming fire. God is taking us in the spirit. God is leading us into life and light and love. But how many know there's some fire burning? Because God's a consuming fire, as I said. And He's given us beauty for ashes. Come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now... Look in verse 20. He said, At that day you'll know that I'm in my Father, and you're in me, and I in you. He's preparing a place in the Father. Hallelujah. For you and for me, if we overcome. Praise the Lord. Now, so we can see, number one, the firstborn was God's. Number two, the, the firstborn was sanctified. And uh, turn to Deut Deuteronomy. I want to show you that it's the hated... Jesus was hated by many, and I believe the people he's raising up will be hated by many. How about you? Amen. Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you. Amen? And I don't mean by our failures and faults. I'm talking about by living righteous and holy. In Deuteronomy chapter 21, notice... In verse 15 through 17, If a man have two wives, one beloved and another hated, and they have borne him children, both the beloved and the hated, 
And if the firstborn son be hers that was hated, it shall be when he makes his son to inherit that which he hath, that he may not make the son of the beloved firstborn before the son of the hated, which is indeed the firstborn. Verse 17. But he shall acknowledge the son of the hated for what? The firstborn by giving him something. A double portion of all that he hath. For he is the beginning, there it is again now, what God, Jacob told Reuben, of his strength. The right of the firstborn is his. He's the hated. Hallelujah. Why do you think Joseph's brethren hated him? We saw a while ago that the blessing fell upon Joseph and his sons. I mean, know that somebody said one time he was pitied by his father. He was pitied by his half-brethren. He was potted in the house of Potiphar, and he was put it on the throne. Joseph was a hated man. You remember he had his dreams, and he told his half-brethren his dreams, and they threw him in the pit. They hated him. Amen? And you know, when you start having spiritual dreams and visions, not everybody's going to love you. Joseph was the eleventh son. The son uh, of the number which means confusion. And the first thing a dream, a spiritual dream, or a spiritual vision will do, it will confuse you. Because you don't always understand what God's saying. Isn't that right? Hallelujah. And we don't always understand what God's saying. Now, I want to show you that Joseph was hated. Turn to Genesis 49. Genesis 49. And I want to look at verse 22. And Joseph means uh, addition or to continue a thing. We know that he was named uh, by his, uh, when his mother had him, which represented something, or show her something and us something, that she would have, of course, another son, which was Benjamin, the son of the right hand. And have you know that Benjamin was the only son born to Jacob after his nature had been changed to Israel? Amen. Now, here in verse 22, Joseph is a fruitful bough, and a fruitful bough by a well whose branches run over what? The wall. How many know there's a lot of walls standing in the way? There's a lot of things stand in this Joseph ministry's way. Now, he's a type of Jesus, and we know he's a type of the sons. But his, notice, it says he, uh, his branch runs over the wall. Again, we're either a climbing vine or a creeping vine. We're going uh, over things or something's coming over us. Isn't that right? We're going down to the earth. <clears throat> Amen. There is the, there is the Christ nature and the beast nature right there. Verse 23, the archers, here's, here's other ministries and other people, have sought to grieve him and shot at him and hated him. So Joseph was a hated man. Amen. Jesus was a hated man by the religious systems. And you and I will be hated by religiosity if we follow on to know the Lord. And you'll read the rest of that and you'll see the blessing of God's upon him. Now turn uh, to another scripture. Turn to Genesis 45. Let's look at Joseph just a minute. He was a preserver of life. In Genesis 45, verse 5 through 7, or through 8, and he also recognized the dealings of God. How many know we don't always do that? We, we don't always recognize God's dealings in our life. But in chapter 45, verse 5, Now therefore, he said to his brethren, Be not grieved nor angry with yourselves that you sold me hither. For God did send me. God did send me before you to do something, to preserve life. So this man preserved life. He didn't destroy it. Verse 6. These two years hath the famine been in the land, yet there are five years in which there shall neither be errand nor harvest. And God sent me before you. Hallelujah. Maybe God's got you in a place that you don't like. Maybe He's raised, pre, pre, preserving you, that you also can come to a place where you can preserve life too. Amen. Hallelujah. How I many we're tested by our failures? We're tested by our successes. We're tested in the furnace of affliction. And we're tested this way, that God uh, withdraws our consciousness from His presence. At times, you're thrust head-on uh, into a situation with the enemy. It seems like God is not around, but He's looking. He's there. And lastly, the fifth way we're, we're, we're tested, He leaves some of the enemy in your land to see what you're going to do about it. 
Amen? How many of we all got enemies? Let God arise. Come on. His, his enemies be what? And His enemies are my enemies and your enemies. And God has set me before you to preserve you a posterity in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. Amen. So it's not you that sent me hither, but God. Hallelujah. He saw God. Chapter 50 of Genesis. 19 and 20. The brethren come and fall before him. In verse 19, Joseph said to them, Fear not, I am in the place of God. I'm in the place of God. God had prepared that place there for Joseph. Verse 20, But as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it to good to bring to pass, as it is this day, to save much people alive. So he was a preserver of life. Can you say amen, brother? Amen. amen. Now, let's look at Something else. Let's go back to Genesis 48, verse 21. Now, Jacob had just been prophesying to the sons of Joseph, Ephraim and Manasseh. And how many know he switched his hands and Joseph got upset about it? But Jacob knew exactly what he was doing. But in chapter 48, verse 21 and 22, let's see what Jacob said to Joseph. It says in verse 21, Israel said to Joseph, Behold, I die, but God shall be with you and bring you again into the land of your fathers. How many know when Joseph died, he said, Don't leave my bones in Egypt. <laughs> Take my bones to the promised land. Hallelujah. Maybe he saw that resurrection coming. That, how many know after Jesus rose from the dead, the Bible said many came out of the graves and went into the city and appeared to many. Maybe Joseph was in that group. I don't know. Next verse. Moreover, I have given to you to be one portion above. Come on. Well, one portion more is how many? Double portion. What's a double portion? So that you can give to others. Amen. So that you can give to others. As well as the minister there and here. Hallelujah. Moreover, I have given to thee one portion above thy brethren, which I took out of the hand of the Amorite and the, by the sword and by the bow. So Joseph had an extra portion. Glory to God. I'll tell you, I want that extra portion. How about you? Amen. Hallelujah. You know, when Elisha and Elijah are walking together through all those places they went, which we won't go into. You remember they came and they crossed Jordan. And it was after they crossed through death. Jordan speaks of uh, I think it means descending, but it also speaks, J-O-R speaks of uh, spreading, Dan speaks of judgment. And as they come through judgment waters on the other side, you remember Elisha asked for what? The double portion. And Elijah said, you've asked for a hard thing, but if you see me go, it'll be granted. How many know Elijah there could be a type of Jesus, and of course other types, but... And how many know that when Jesus, I mean when Elijah went up, the mantle came down? When Jesus went up, the mantle came down, the Holy Ghost. But he asked on the other side of Jordan, and he received that double portion. Not to do twice the miracles Elijah did, but he wanted the portion of the firstborn. I mean, it was granted to him. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. It was granted to him, I said. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I want to say this. Go back to Joseph. You know, there is that there are times that this walk is a lonely walk. I mean, you don't always have this many people around you. Joseph was lonely in that pit that he was put in. Joseph was lonely in the house of Potiphar's wa uh, Potiphar because usually there was just a woman there and she tried to seduce him. And Joseph was lonely in the uh, <clears throat> prison house. And no doubt he was lonely even there on the throne with Pharaoh. And there is a time that you and I have to walk in that realm. But isn't it good when you can come together with God's people who love Jesus, who have one aim, one purpose, and that's to be like Him. Hallelujah. There's so much religiosity in the land. We need Jesus, but we need each other. Amen. And we know the service not greater than His Lord, His Master. 
No, sir. Now, <clears throat> let me give you a few other things here about Joseph. I'm going to tell you seven things. Seven blessings I wrote down here. I mean, you know, he was given, and before I say this, there were three strippings in Joseph's life. He was stripped by his half-brother in the pit, put in the pit. He was stripped by the woman in Potiphar's, Potiphar's house, type the harlot. I mean, you know, there's a harlot church that will strip you of your purity. There's a Jezebel. And he was stripped from his prison garments and shaved and took the throne. Come on, 30, 60, 100. Out of court, holy place, holy of holies. Now, there were seven blessings that Joseph received. Number one, there was given to him a ring, the seal of authority. The seal of authority. Number two, there was given him a robe, which is the robe of righteousness to us, spiritually speaking. I mean, know that his bride is making herself ready in Revelation 19. I mean, that speaks of preparation. Go you out to meet the bridegroom, isn't that right? And be ready, the Scripture tells us, to be prepared. Hallelujah. Number three, he was given a golden chain. Chain is that which you uh, wear around your neck. And the next speaks of the will. And our wills must be submitted to God. In fact, our wills must be crushed and broken. Where we can come to that place where we say, God is not my will any longer, but it's your will. Again, those brethren, see, that, that come into this firstborn uh, blessing are those who will do the will of God. Amen? Number four, he was given a chariot. <laughs> I guess that would speak of a modern-day what? <laughs> well, who knows? I'm not going to name any names. <laughs> Amen. God's got some chariots, doesn't he? Hallelujah. Elijah, ask Elijah about it one of these days. Then there was given to him a proclamation. There was a proclamation. If we confess him, he's going to what? Confess us before the Father. And then also he was given a new name. Now turn to Genesis 41. Let's look at this. And then I'll give you the last point in just a second. In Genesis 40 name, uh, 41, a new name, that's a, that's a good name, isn't it? Genesis 41, uh, verse 45. 41, 45. And Pharaoh called Joseph's name zapnath Oh, I hope that's right. Don't ask me again. And verse 46, he was 30 uh, years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. So about probably 13 or 14 years had elapsed before he had had the vision or the dream and he actually, you know, the vision was fulfilled, and he took the throne. But he was at the same age of Jesus when Jesus began his ministry. He's the same age of David when David uh, was anointed the third time. And right here, he was given a new name, Zapnath Paniah. And this word can also mean, number one, it can mean a revealer of secrets. I mean, no, there's only one can reveal his secrets, and that's God Almighty. Number two, it can also mean the salvation of the world. Jesus died for the world. Nobody has a corner on salvation. He died for the world, didn't he? Three, it means the prince of the life of the world. And he is the prince of peace. Number four, it means the food of life or of the living. And he is our bread. He is our food. He's our daily bread today. Amen. And I wrote the fifth one down. It means the discoverer of the hidden things. I mean, oh, God's got some hidden things He wants to tell you. Amen? And the seventh thing, the seventh blessing, He was given a Gentile bride to share His glory. I mean, oh, He's raising up a bride. Again, a chaste virgin. One that's pure, full of power, and will be perfected. Amen? Hallelujah. Well, Lord, where to go from here? Okay, I want to read you something. Here's a lady that had a vision. Praise the Lord. Her name is Claire Grace. I heard her preach this one time. But I want to read just a couple paragraphs from this vision. I think I read it once, here once before, but that's, that's all right. She said, I saw a great group of people caught up behind the veil. And I know, I knew when I was seeing it that it was not the rapture of the church. And the Spirit said, I am taking them up to the same place that I took the Apostle Paul. When he saw and heard things that were never allowed to express fully. 
And this is why Peter said he speaks some things hard to understand, and some rest them or twist them to their own destruction. And when they were caught up, I saw faces of others pressing through from behind the veil. And the Spirit said, these are, these are the faces pressing through are uh, the spirit of just men made perfect who are pressing through the veil for their re resurrection. This caught up group returned to the earth. I mean, on Revelation it said the man child's caught up to the throne. Isn't that right? And then we know he's going to minister here on the earth to the woman where? In the wilderness. This caught up group returned to the earth and the saints who were made perfect waiting for resurrection were resurrected. The two groups became one group and came back to the earth. And the Spirit said, God said, These are my full-grown sons. They have uh, access to both sides of the veil. There will be a group of people who will not taste of death, but will walk out of time into eternity and will set up the visible earthly kingdom of Christ. I saw a dark valley and I saw the church in it. And these two groups, the caught-up overcomers and resurrected saints, walked, became one, went ministering to them, lifting up feeble hands, strengthening, lifting up weary bodies. And he said, These are my full-grown sons who have received a double portion of my Father's inheritance. And it is part of their duty to supply the needs of the rest of the family of God. And they, God said, are preparing to rest our parents. They are ministering to the rest of my body until it shall come to the place where I can come and set up my visible kingdom. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So he's the firstborn. Among many brethren. Hallelujah. Oh, there's a price to pay, isn't there? I mean, no, he, gave, he gave you his salvation. He gave you the Holy Ghost, baptism Holy Ghost. But now you've got to press into God. Amen. The violent takes the kingdom by what? Force. How I many know that's in the spirit realm? And there is a pressing in. And we know there's, there is buffeting. There is warfare uh, from the enemy. And it's continually. We have to learn to die daily to those things, those desires, those things that we like. Praise God. Let's stand. Hallelujah. I'm going to minister to some here today. But I want us to praise Him. I, mean, I want us to praise Him from our hearts. Oh, Jesus. 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 We feel... We're, God, we fall so short. We fall so short, God, of what you desire for us, Lord. Wash us, O oh God. Cleanse us, mighty God. Jesus, touch each heart today, Lord. Touch those that are hurting today, Lord. Touch those that are hurting, God. Oh, mighty God, mighty God. Lord, we love you, Lord. We just reach out to you today. Mighty Lamb of God, help us, Lord. We cry out for your abundance. We cry out for that double portion ministry. We cry out for that extra portion, Lord. Oh, God. Oh, God, that we may give out to others and help others, Lord. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Hmm. Or, <clears throat> hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Where's Sister Miller at? Is she back here? Praise the Lord. I want to minister to Sister Miller. Sister Miller, just come up this way. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Let's stay in the Spirit. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. Weep no longer, saith the Lord, but know that God is with thee. And the Lord has planted that precious seed within thee. And know that that seed is growing and maturing in thy God. For the hand of the Lord is upon thee. And yea, my goodness shall pass by thee and within thee, as I did even with Moses. But know the Lord has raised thee up. Yea, he has given you insight and perception. He has put discernment within thy bosom and within your heart. Now look not behind thee now any longer, but know and trust and believe that the Lord 
has planned shall be worked out through thee. For surely I'm going to reveal myself to you in a new dimension and a new, a new way in this hour. For your heart shall rejoice because of what I'm doing, saith the Lord. So set your eyes upon the Lord. Claim and behold that which is yours, and you'll have it, saith the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. I want our sister here to come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's praise Him. Amen. Let's praise our Lord. Let's praise our God. Oh, yes. Amen. The Lord has seen the buffeting. He has seen the heartaches. But know that God shall move swiftly for thee. Yea, the Lord shall cut asunder those things uh, that have stood in thy pathway, and the obstacles that, uh, that have been there before your eyes. He shall remove, saith the Lord. So trust and believe and know that the Lord God uh, has heard your cry, and know that those things shall go. And I, the Lord, shall cause uh, your feet to walk in a straight path. For yea, I will direct thee, and you shall walk before me uh, as a leader of old. And yea, thou shall know that it's a walk of faith and not by sight, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, let's praise our God today. Let's praise our Lord today. Put this young man right here. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Reach your hands out to him. Will you do it? Handarobo sidaba handarobo koda bahaya. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord has heard your cry. The Lord has heard the petition that you have desired of him. For I've said that I would give you the desires of your heart. For I've put the desire within you, my son. But no, uh, thou art to knock, thou art to ask, and thou art to seek. For yea, in doing that, thou shalt receive from the Lord. And I'm not just talking of material things. But yea, seek for me, uh, knock for me, uh, ask for me, saith the Lord. And I'll fill your life, and I'll show you the way. For I am the way, the truth, and the life. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's praise our God. Let's praise our God. Amen. This lady in the blue over here, sweater. Yes. Amen. Would you come up, please? Hallelujah. Oh, Father. Hallelujah. Praise His name. Hallelujah. In the night season, the Lord shall visit thee. The Lord shall speak to thee in dreams, and he'll show what he, uh, thee what he requires of thee. For there are some things he requires of thee, uh, especially three things. And those things shall be made clear to your heart, and others shall confirm it. And I'll even show you in my word. But trust in me, even know that the Lord God shall visit thee, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This lady in the green right here. This lady right here in the green jacket. Yes, ma'am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. The Lord shall strengthen thee, and the Lord shall guide thee with his mighty eye. For his ear is open to your cry, and his eye is over the righteous. And he has heard uh, uh, thy petition. And yea, uh, know that in this hour your feet shall walk other places. Your feet shall go in the ways of the Lord. Your feet shall not go the way man says, uh, for they would lead you a uh, 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 different direction. And thou would stumble, and thou would fall. But the Lord shall lead you, and the terrain that you go you will not always like in the flesh. You'll not like in the natural, but I'll take you in the places I desire you to go, for it shall be my will. Thou shall follow, and thou shall be blessed. Hallelujah. How many know there's a lot of places he's going to lead you you don't want to go? Uh, Corey's mother. I forget her first name. What? Huh? Yeah, okay. Praise the Lord, Regina. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, let's praise our Lord. Let's praise our God. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. That's right, Lord. The Lord has not forgotten thee. The Lord has not forgotten thee, saith the Lord. And I said, lift up your heart. Lift up your voice as a trumpet. And show my people their transgressions. For surely the hand of the Lord has put his hand upon thee. And his word is within your heart. Yea, his word burns within your heart. And know that uh, even as Jeremiah, uh, uh, J Jeremiah said, I will not speak no more of him. But yet Jeremiah said, uh, knew that he would, and he did. And yea, thou shalt be, has been discouraged at times. But know that the Lord thy God has put his word in thee. Yea, his fire is within your bones. His fire is in your life. And thou hast petitioned thy God. Thy God shall not forget thee. Thy God has said, yea, thy prayers have been answered. But yea, thou shalt see a performance. But it's going to be in my time and in my way. And you'll know that it's me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, glory. Amen. Hallelujah. 
I have a hard time getting that out. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Kevin. Where's Kevin at? Kevin back there? Come here, Brother Kevin. Praise the Lord. Oh, wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord has seen the faithfulness of your heart. And the Lord has cut away. But the Lord is healing and mending. Yea, the Lord would say, now the fences are being built. The wall is being built up. Yea, to keep the enemy out. I've called you, my son, to intercede and stand in the gap and make up the hedge. Yea, for my people as well as for thyself. But know that in this hour the Lord God shall yet do a mighty and a work, a strange act within thee. A, a mighty work of the Holy Spirit. So shirk not thy responsibility. Hold not back, my son. Allow not timidity to overtake thee, but overcome it by the power of my blood in my word, saith the Lord. For I put boldness in you. The bow of the, the righteous are as bold as a lion. So stand strong, my son, and know that the Lord thy God is with you. He's on your left side. He's on your right side. And he's within you. But know I've made you strong. You're strong in me and in the power of my might, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 My son, the hand of the Lord is upon thee for good. And know that my love is within thee. And know that I, the Lord thy God, do open thine eyes and thy heart. For I've seen such a tender spirit. I've seen a submitted spirit. And yea, the Lord thy God shall bless thee. He shall bless thee as thou dost go out. And he'll bless you as you come in. For surely the Lord does lead you, my son. Yea, the Lord is going to lead you in a strange and a mighty way in this hour. And truly you're going to know of the blessings of God. Not only spiritually, but you're going to know even financially. You're going to know that God's with you. And God God's hand is upon thee because of his goodness. Hallelujah. Well, glory. Hallelujah. 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 Let's just worship him now. Father God. Father God, we bless you today. We bless you and we love you. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. How many want the portion of the firstborn? Lift your hands up. Father, you see our hearts. And our desires. Lord, we know in ourselves we cannot attain this. But by the blood of Jesus, and by the power of the Holy Ghost, and by the Word of God, and by the name of Jesus, Lord, there's a people that's going to attain. There's a people going to overcome because the overcomer is in us. Lord God, raise our eyesights today. Lift up our hearts. Anyone discouraged today, lift them up, Lord. Encourage them, Lord. Those in heavy trials and tests, God, I ask you be with them. Quicken them by the Holy Ghost in these meetings, Lord. Lord, let them leave this meeting with a spring on the, uh, spring in their step and a smile on their face, Lord. Let the joy of the Lord ring in our hearts, oh God. Lord Jesus, let us be changed. Let us leave this place differently than when we came, Lord. Let growth come into us, Lord. And let the joy of the Lord prevail in this meeting. And meet every need of the camp, Lord. Bless Brother and Sister Miller. Lord, meet the, uh, the need financially uh, of the camp, Lord. And cause the people to have a giving heart, Lord, to give unto Thee and meet the need of this camp, God. We bless You and we praise You in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Won't you sing a couple words? Of course. Praise the Lord. Praise You, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise You, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise You, Jesus. Praise You, Jesus. Praise You, Jesus. Come and worship royal priesthood. Come and praise Him, holy nation. Worship Jesus, our Redeemer. He is praised. King of glory, come and worship, royal priesthood, come and praise Him, holy nation, worship Jesus, our Redeemer, He is precious. 
of glory. Let's just worship the Lord. Let's just keep our hearts open to receive what the Lord has for us today. You know, the service doesn't close. We just keep on receiving as we just keep open to the Lord. And as you receive, as you open yourself, God will supply that need. He will fulfill that desire. And he will, he will take that hurt and that, and that depression. Whatever is causing the problem, God is here to, to minister to that need today. Let's just worship him now. Let's just praise his holy name and just worship him. Just enter into this spirit of worship and just worship the Lord. Come and worship royal priesthood. Come and praise Him, holy nation. Worship Jesus, our Redeemer. He King of glory, come and worship, royal priesthood, come and praise Him, holy nation, worship Jesus, our King of glory, come and worship, royal priesthood, come and praise Him, holy nation, worship Jesus, our King of glory, it's because we are sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son into our hearts. It's because we are sons. God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son into our hearts, crying Abba, Father, crying Abba, Father. Because we are sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son into our hearts. It's because we are sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of into our hearts, crying out, my Father, crying out, my Father, crying out, Spirit of 
just praise the Lord and worship Him. He's worthy to be praised. We magnify the Lord. Oh, we praise His name. Praise the Lord, oh, praise the Lord. We bless Your name, we bless Your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise you, Lord, oh, praise you, Lord. 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 Oh, la borazia, ora vara hani anna. I condor baha, yoro boro shendiri asana. favorite songs, and if you just think about the words, every morning God's love is fresh and it's new. All we've got to do is receive it and accept it. He doesn't give us something that's left over from yesterday, because to him yesterday's gone. There's nothing we can do about it. But every day God's love is fresh and new, and, and it's energizing and reviving. Let's, as we sing it, let's just think on that thought. New every morning is God's love. New every morning is His wonderful love, bathing my spirit with peace from above.
I will offer up a sacrifice for praise. I will offer up a sacrifice of praise. I will lift my hands unto the Lord. Praise His name. Praise you, Lord. We praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Sweet hour of prayer. Sweet hour of prayer. That calls me from a world of I do this a little differently than Brother Tommy, but that's just God's business. But I have a song for Connie. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. I see your heart lifted up like the flowers. And as the dew that falls on them, I'll fall on you. I will sprinkle you from above with my blessings. For I've chosen you to be a flower for me. You are the grace my table saith the Lord. In my jewels, you will shine. 
shine abundantly. For I've seen your heart and heard your crying. All your tears are known unto me. Don't despair, my little one. The time is coming for the trials and the troubles to be past. For I have placed on thee a new anointing to speak forth the word, and darkness will be past. Connie, I see the Lord is saying to you, you're like a flower. And as the flower unfolds in the springtime to receive of the rain from heaven, God is going to pour down his blessings upon you. And even now, as you stand there, God is just, he's just pouring down this stream. And it's just coursing right down into your very being. And God's anointing is being placed upon you to lead others, not only your, your family, but to others, to lead them to the Lord in a way and in a, and a, that you've never gone before. This is going to be a new way, Connie. And I know you probably haven't even thought about it, but then maybe you have. But God is, God is taking you by the hand and he's leading you in a way that you haven't been before. And he's saying, stand fast, my daughter. Stand fast in the word and in the way that you've come because I'm leading this way. You follow me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Stand fast. Oh, we praise your name, Jesus. I think the Lord would tell us all this morning to stand fast in what we've received. And, in, and as he gives us more, then walk it. To walk it out. A little at a time. We can't, we can't, re we just can't comprehend and take it all in at once. We just have to take a little at a time. It's like tasting everything that he's got spread out on the table before us, you know. Like the dinner we had yesterday. We went by, we got a little of this and a little of that. And it was all so good, but we couldn't have eaten it all. We had to just take what we could eat. And God is giving us all a portion. Praise the name of Jesus. 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 And Tommy, I have a word for you. Praise the Lord. This always shakes me a little bit. Here I am. This, you know, this is a minister and I'm just me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He says, my son, your feet have been put upon a hard path. But that path is not something that you can't follow. Because I've put within you the strength and the ability and the purpose to do it. Because I'm leading you on to different ways and different paths and, and in and places that you've never been. And in thoughts that you've never thought because they're my thoughts. And they're, they're my ways. And they'll not be man's ways or man's thoughts. But lean on me, saith the Lord. Lean on me with all of your understanding. And I will direct and I will lead and guide and bring you into that place you so yearn and desire to be. Yes, Lord. Amen. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Lord, we just acknowledge your, your kingship. We bless your name, Father. We praise you, Lord. We exalt you, Lord. We praise your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I will offer a sacrifice of praise. I will offer up a sacrifice of praise. I I will offer up a 
Thank you for your presence that is amongst us. I praise you for it. Thank you for your anointing at rest over those that minister in song and in word. And, of, and, and in all who sit in the pews, Lord, I thank you for your presence and your anointing. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings. And Father, we thank you for the food that's prepared. We thank you for making it health and strength to us. Thank you, Lord, for renewing us as the eagle. We thank you for it as we praise and worship and magnify thee. And making you Lord of Lords and King of Kings in every area of our life. I praise you for it today, Lord, and I thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.